Oh, the narwhal again. So I think this is the fourth day out of the last, or the fourth trip out of the last five days. So I've been out a lot because the fishing's been really good and you've got to make hay when the sun shines or catch fish when the conditions are favorable. So to um, make up for all the crab blank days that I have, I've decided to fill my boots at the moment. Yes, it may be cost me a fortune in petrol, but um, I think it's worth it. And I am taking a few fish for the freezer. So at the moment, you can see the tide is ebbing we're getting towards the end of the ebb tide. It's only got a little bit more to run. And then once it gets to this line here, look that, to there is slack water. So I've come out with the intention of heading north. So because this is at the moment ebbing, it's going from south to north. Um, and it should run for another, maybe it's another hour or so. Um, but my intention is to motor north along to Blythe and fish the rocky ground around Blythe. And by the time I get along there, the tide should have turned and should mean that I have a drift coming back home um, which means that I can drift all afternoon and evening and not have to use any petrol. Due to the success of these mighty minnows I've been back to my local tackle shop uh, it's Billy's Fishing Tackle in North Shields and I've got some more of these they're only £2.50 a pack in there which is like half the price they are online so that's a total bargain so I've got another four of those because I lost a couple yesterday uh, and in addition I got myself some sort of mackerel style um, because I have been trying to catch bass. I'm not tar targeting bass today because I think the bass are to the south of the River Tyne. And I've also got a couple of wire booms. Now I have ordered some of these online but they're not here. But since I was in there and these were only a couple of quid for a pack, I got them. And I'm hoping that way it's going to stop me getting so many tangles. I found yesterday using the sort of Whitby wrecking rig. Um, I found that I was just getting loads of tangles and it was really annoying me. So this is the rig I've got going on today. Again, I've been consulting the fish logger. For all, all fishing information, just 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 visit the fish logger. Uh, so there we go. Look, we've got a nice long flowing trace of about, I don't know, three feet uh, off that, which hopefully that'll keep that away. I've also tied on a leader of, of I think it's 30 or 40 pound. No, I think it's 30 pound uh, mono. So that's just, I've got a small swivel, which attaches this, this rubbing leader to my braid. I was finding again, once you get a tangle with a braid, because it's so fine and it wraps up so many times, getting the tangles out was a flipping nightmare. So I've decided to keep the braid as far away from the, um, the lure, the weight and the boom as possible. Since I've got a bit of time, I'm just going to hang around in the estuary for 20 minutes or so and see if there's any bait fish. It would be nice to get some small herring to use as live baits. Today I'm going to be targeting cod, but obviously it would be nice to have a live bait down to see if there's a, a big fat pollock comes along. I lost that one last night and honestly I can't stop thinking about it. That's like the drug part of fishing. You know, once, once you've felt a good fish and if you don't get to see it, it makes it even more tantalizing. But once you've fished, felt a good fish and you just like, you lose it. Oh, it's devastating. So I found a couple of patches of bait inside the estuary, but the fish weren't on the feed, so I didn't get any. Because it is now fully slack water, it's gonna be like nothing's happening for an hour. So this is where I'm gonna do my, um, my trip along to Blythe. It's a bit boring just steaming along, but um, it's a good opportunity to have some lunch. We've got ham and coleslaw today on some um, some bread, buns from the bakery. Best buns in North Tyneside, these by the way. Right, I'll see you when I get there. Seems like glass today. I'm just cruising along the very comfortable six knots, sipping away at my fuel. All right, so we've made it. It's been a lovely cruise along the coast. Actually, it was very relaxing and it's only taken 45 minutes so somehow i've managed to get digital radio reception out here which i can't even get in the bakery um so i've been listening to a game of football so i'm at blythe i'm actually north of blythe and over the ground that is very tasty looking and i basically i've got about five hours to drift my way home so this should be a nice relaxing afternoon stroke evening it's now about 2 45 in the afternoon and here's where we are, look. So that is the very, very last there, that 0 0.2 knots. And that arrow indicates that that's the very, very end of the ebb tide, which is running north. And now the, the flood tide's gonna, gonna take us home back to the south. And hopefully there's a nice big cod here for me. Some really good ground that we're over here. I feel like these guys are waiting for me to do something. action so far the only thing that's happened is i've been savaged by a giant wasp i had to beat it to death on the bottom of the boat it was very intent on um, climbing at the back of my head this is excellent ground yet it's gotta be full of fish all i've had so far is one tiny little codling 
and one foul hooked baby pollock. Our drift is very slow, we're doing like 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 of a knot of drift. Could do with being a bit faster really to work my uh, soft plastic lure. There's the carcass of the vanquished enemy. See behind me it's come on a pea super. There's a lot of mist. Now that would be a big problem if I didn't have a chart plotter. Visibility is down to about 100 yards. Now obviously it's not a good idea to be reliant on one electronic device um, because if there's a problem with that then well then you're screwed aren't you and technology isn't always as reliable as it should be however i know that my um, chart plot is accurate because i've tested it so i went out i've done out gone out in the dark and i've um, marked myself um along the the channel of the river tyne and i basically i've followed where the green markers are and everything's lined up perfectly so i do have faith in, in that particular system in case it goes wrong i do have a, a tablet on board as well um, which is fully charged and has also got navionics charts loaded on it which again i've actually tested out in the field and i know that they do work on top of that so i do have paper charts and i've got two compasses so for me if everything goes wrong and i went uh, and i couldn't see a thing i would just go off my compass and i would head southeast and I know that if I had, if I took that bearing, then I'd pretty much keep away from land and keep out of trouble. Um, and even if I had to, I've got my anchor on board. I've got two anchors on board, actually, with plenty of warp. So if needs be, I could quite easily anchor up and just wait out the mist. Um, the only risk to you in that situation is obviously other shipping. So at least my chart plotter shows where the shipping lanes are. Yeah, it's definitely a lot easier to be a mariner in the modern era. But it is very eerie being out. I'm hoping it's going to clear because it's not as enjoyable. It takes, it, you know, it, it adds an element of uneasiness to the fishing trip. So far, the fishing trip hasn't gone too well. I, I drifted over that lovely ground at Blythe and I didn't have a single bite. Um, and I guess it's the tide isn't running very hard. It's starting to pick up now. We're running a knot. Or we're, we're moving at 1.1 knot, 1.2. So it's going up ever so slightly. So hopefully as the current builds momentum, then the fish will come on the feed and We'll get, we'll get something nice. Otherwise it's been a long trip up the coast for nothing. It's a ridiculous situation. So I've caught a weaver fish, which is a poisonous fish. It's got a poisonous spine on it. But look at the jig it took. I mean, it's totally knacked itself like. Well, I found all the missing mackerel. So everybody, everybody I talk to, like in the fishing shop or people who are interested in fishing, they're all saying, that, oh, there's no mackerel this year. It's terrible, there's absolutely no mackerel. Bloody hell, there's so many mackerel out here. It's ridiculous. It's not even funny how many mackerel there are out here. If I wanted to here, I could pull up string after string after string and literally fill the boat. Straight back to the depth. I've picked up a fish at last. I've been plagued by mackerel for ages and other than a pair of little codlings the same size as the one I've got here I had no action at all So here's hope and here's the start of many more I've just drifted past St Mary's Lighthouse. I took extra precautions because obviously the visibility is poor. It's better than it was before. It's about 250 meters now. But obviously I don't want to run aground, so I was extra cautious and I've given St Mary's a wide berth. Tide's still, we're just, we're waiting for the, the fast three hours of the tide when it runs at its fastest. That's when I'm hoping the fish are gonna turn on because so far it's been a really poor day. I know we've got another codling, it feels a little bit better than the last one. Oh no, it's a small poke. Oh, come here little fella. Let 
Let him go over the side because it's just smashed me in the face. All right, well, let's hope that's the sign of more good things to come. So far, I'm regretting my decision to come north today. I wish I'd stayed. I wish I'd gone south like I was yesterday. Well, this is good. It was giving me a slack line bite. Oh, that's a mackerel, of course. Really, mackerel will take anything. Half that. Come on. Look at that. That is like a little mini tuna, I think. Something that feels okay. Giving up the ghost pretty quickly though, I think it's a little coddling. Well, it's putting a bend in the rod. Oh god. Oh, it's a hard day to do. One. Still not a monster. Do you know what it is? I think I've been spoiled over the last couple of days. I've had such good fishing. Now I've gone back to normal. I just can't believe it. And the worst thing is, because I lost that bloody big fish last night, today was not a good day to have a bad day. I could have had a good day to put that out of my mind. Well, it's about half past seven and I'm pretty much ready to call it quits. It's been a hard day's fishing today. The the flood tide that I was fishing, it just never really got going. I don't know, I guess there's more to fathoming out the currents and tides than, than meets the eye. It was an enigmatic video, if, if nothing else, since we're completely shrouded in mist. And going to sea in these sort of conditions, you have to take extreme care. I like to think that I've, I've done what I can to make myself as safe as possible. I think the worst thing that could happen really is that you, another ship sails into you, or a, a big ship or a small, you know, a boat appears out of nowhere. Uh, I guess that's probably the worst thing that could happen. Although, like I say, the visibility has improved a lot now, but before it was very, very, very poor. The water clarity has been terrible today as well. I mean, it's full of weed and it's, it's really, really like green soup. So uh, maybe that's having a factor on the lure fishing that I've been doing today. Or maybe it's just a small tide. Um, to tell you the truth, I didn't actually check whether it was a big tide or a small tide. It's neat, a neat or a spring tide. Sometimes when you come out, the fishing is just so good, you, just, you don't really need to check the tides. Uh, you just come out and you seem to get lucky. One thing I have seen over the last two or three days is absolutely millions of dead seabirds. It's obviously the avian flu. It's a bit sad to see, really, especially when you see like gannets and guillemots.
the beer has a big skirt and I'm going to go right in the middle of them before I head up west. Obviously I'm keeping my eyeballs well peeled for other vessels. There's people actually fishing off the pier there. And you think that must be like deafening with the boat horn going off above your head. You just got to trust the markers, keep calm and rely on your navigation systems. Royal Keys, this is now all coming over. Hello there, could I have a look in please over? Thank you. There you are. If you are ever caught out in the mist at sea or in the fog, you've just got to keep calm, trust your instruments, make sure you've got a backup chart plotter on board, and just keep calm and you'll be alright. <laughs> 